someone reached out to me recently and said that in one of my meditations that they listened to towards the end, I talk about forgiveness and they said how that really impacted them and actually it made them quite emotional and left them in tears. So I thought that I would do a meditation and record it just on forgiveness. As a performance coach and coaching for the last 20 years, I can confirm that we give ourselves the hardest time. No one in our life, in our personal life, in our intimate relationships, in our business, generally speaking, gives us as much of a hard time as we give ourselves. Especially if you're a high performer, a high achiever, someone that's always striving for more because you, lot, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You have very high standards. And although this is a, a strength, it's only a strength when it doesn't come at a cost. And one way to remove that cost of the pressure that you put on yourself, the tension that you put yourself under, and the high standards you set for yourself is to practice self-compassion. And through meditation, one of the ways in which you can practice self-compassion is self-forgiveness. So join me in this meditation. If you've been giving yourself a hard time, saying things that you really shouldn't be saying to yourself, saying things to yourself that you would never say to your child or a child or your nephew or your niece, now's time to just sit with that and be the observer of what comes up, to be the witness without judgment and to just change the emotions and change the language that actually change the results of what you experience and go from chaos to clarity. Go from putting yourself down to lifting yourself up and giving yourself a little bit of praise and acknowledgement for everything that you are going through, have been through, and what you have experienced in your life that's maybe made you not be able to forgive yourself. Forgiveness, like my first ever hero, Nelson Mandela, my, the former president of my country where I'm from, South Africa, like he said so well, that having anger and resentment is like drinking poison and expecting it to kill the other person. The only person that it destroys is you. And like I said, when it comes to us being hard on ourselves, we are harder on ourselves, generally speaking, than, you know, I'm speaking about the general public. I'd like to think that the clients that I've worked with over the years have mastered this and they don't actually uh, put themselves under pressure to a point that actually it destroys them spiritually. But generally speaking, we put ourselves under so much pressure that it really... It comes at the cost of our happiness and our inner peace. But one of the many reasons why I do what I do is because we can take our inner peace back. We can take it back through practices like uh, the one that we are about to do together. And we can also take our confidence back. We can take our certainty back. We can take our courage back. But that's a, a whole nother conversation. So let's take our our peace back by closing your eyes and settling into this meditation. For a moment, leave your business behind, your job, your career, your troubles at home, if you have any. Anything that's causing friction and tension in your life. Thinking is a choice. Many of us go through our life thinking from the moment we wake up to the moment we fall asleep. Thinking, 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 thinking all day. 
without thinking that thinking is a choice and there's a time and a place to think. And most of the time we're not even thinking about anything in the present. We're thinking about the past and we're thinking about the future and jumping from the past to the future to the past to the future to the past to the future. Missing out on the joy and the gift of this present moment. So for this meditation, do your very best to not think about anything in the past, and any tension from the past, and anything in the future, anything that might happen or might not happen. Just let it go, just for now. It doesn't make you ignorant, it makes you wise. Mindfulness is wisdom being able to keep yourself present, clear, your mind clear and calm, even in the midst of chaos, coming from the past or the present, that is wisdom. So as we settle into this meditation, I just want you to focus on one thing only, and that is your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. And using my voice only as a guide. This is not a race. Go at your own pace. Wherever you are sitting right now, it's your space. Just be there. Breathing in and breathing out. At your own speed, find your flow, find your rhythm, and use your breath to relax your body. With every inhalation and exhalation, Feel your body becoming more and more and more relaxed. Feeling the energy in your body from your head all the way down to your toes. Every time you breathe in and follow it with an exhale. Feel your body getting even more relaxed. Surrendering. Letting go. Of anything that is not in this moment. leaving behind anything from the past. And not allowing your thoughts to go into the future, even if it is your next meal. Meditation is not so much about not thinking as it is about the awareness of whether you are thinking or not. So anytime you find yourself thinking thoughts that take you away from your meditation, your only job is to be aware of that thought or those thoughts and without any judgment whatsoever, just bring yourself back to the present moment. And it's so easy to do. All you have to do is bring yourself back to your breath. You can meditate anywhere. All you need is your body and your breath.
focusing on your inhalation and your exhalation and feeling the energy of the body. As I count down from five, I want you to feel your body with each in and out breath, getting even more relaxed. Five. Four. Three. and one. Relaxing, releasing, surrendering and letting go. Feeling the energy in your body, calming down, the intensity fading away. Making time for meditation doesn't mean that you're irresponsible or you're ignorant if you have problems out there in the world that you need to be dealing with. It doesn't take your problems away. But it changes how you deal with those problems, how you attack those problems, how you see those problems. And that is everything. I'm sure you've heard that saying that it's not what happens to us. It's how we deal with what happens to us. It's what we do that matters. And this right here, this self-compassion practice, giving yourself permission to sit and be still. This will allow you to deal with everything better. It'll make you stronger, more resilient, more patient, more persistent. Because in all the things on the outside world that make you feel like you're knocking on empty or struggling. Meditation brings you back to fullness and thriving. It reminds us that Everything we need is already within us. And that any worst possible outcome on the outside is okay because we'll still have our body and our breath regardless of what happens. And that means we still have life, we still have energy, we still have vitality, we still have consciousness, and we still have choice. And as long as you have that, every day you can go again. Give it another shot. Stay strong. 
keep moving forward and never settle. Just take a moment to be grateful for your body and your breath and the energy, the life force that you feel inside your body right now. Without that energy, without that life force, that chi, you cannot exist. Take a moment to be grateful for your heart that started beating almost nine months before you were even born. And will keep beating until the very last day that you have this body. It's always been supporting you and it will always support you until your last day. Just show it some gratitude. We put our hearts through so much stress, even just through our thoughts. Thoughts of fear, thoughts of anxiety, thoughts of overwhelm, put our heart under stress. But our heart deals with it, it takes it. It accepts those thoughts. It accepts the stress and the tension and just deals with it. And then eventually that stress ends and you go on with your life. And we never, we never just say thank you. <laughs> thank you for supporting me through that. I couldn't have done it without you. Maybe just put your hand on your heart and say thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for not giving up on me yet. Breathing in and breathing out. With your body relaxed and your mind calm, staying in the observer and the witness, reminding you that no thought can create suffering. Only judging our thoughts can create suffering. So as long as there is no judge, there can be no suffering. Learn to train your mind to observe thoughts for exactly what they are. Thoughts and not our identity. Our identity is who we are every day. Thoughts are just passing by. Meditation allows you to differentiate between what is a thought passing by and what is you. You are the witness, you are the observer. But when you become the judge, You allow your thoughts to creep in to your identity. So train your mind. And know that you are not your thoughts. We go through our every day using our conscious mind to make decisions, what to do next, 
which way to go to work, what to eat, how to speak to people. But there's an underlying program that'll influence our conscious mind and the decisions that we make, and that is our subconscious. And the subconscious mind, the program, the software, is created through conditioning. Conditioning from our past, our past experiences, specifically our experiences of intensity, a divorce, a death, a breakup, a breakdown, a bankruptcy, abuse, anything. We're also conditioned by our role models or our lack of role models. Maybe if we didn't have good parents or we didn't even have parents and we're conditioned by our environment and what we experience in our environment from as young as we can remember, from as young as we can even start to make decisions. When we're a young child and we're just observing everything. Actually, children are our greatest teachers because they don't judge anything. But it's with the conditioning that we start to judge. It's with the conditioning that our ego comes into play child doesn't have an ego, child doesn't judge, they just witness and observe and they stay in the present moment. Observe any child, young child, and you'll observe a great teacher. But as we become conditioned and we develop an ego and we start judging and we start having fantasies and our pride develops and jealousy develops. We start to develop these judgments. And when we judge something or someone, it generally means that you put one thing higher than the other. So I am better than you, you're better than me, they're better than me, they're more successful than me, they did better than me, they're smarter than me. And you raise one up, one person, one experience, one outcome, and the result of raising one experience or person or outcome up it means now the alternative to that is one level lower. So when you look at someone and you say, oh wow, they did it that way, clearly they're more successful. Not only are you putting them up, but you're putting yourself down. When you say, oh, I wish I had their body, you're putting them up, but you're putting yourself down. You don't necessarily consciously need to be doing something or saying something to put yourself down. Just by putting someone up, that means now you're not on the same level as them. And in life, we are human beings. All human beings make mistakes. Leaders of countries, presidents, community leaders, family leaders, business leaders, Anyone, we all make mistakes. But when we judge ourselves for those mistakes based on what we think we could have done or should have done or what other people expected of us or wherever we have this tension and this separation, we keep one downing ourselves, one downing ourselves, one downing ourselves. And our confidence, with every single time that we judge ourselves for our mistakes, our confidence decreases, our certainty decreases, our well-being decreases. But we're all just doing our best. Whether you're someone that's 
being unkind or violent to a partner, whether it's someone that's an addict, whether it's someone that's a criminal, whether you are a leader in business, but you lack compassion, or you're a business owner and you're never at home, and therefore you're doing things that you shouldn't do when you're away from your family because there's no accountability there, or whether you're working so hard in your job as a, as a leader, but as a result of that, it's coming at a cost and you're doing things that you don't want to be doing, but you keep doing it, like drinking or smoking or overeating or not sleeping enough. We are all doing our best. And if we weren't, we wouldn't be doing it. Our nature as human beings is compassion. Observe any child. It's to love. It's to love people around them. It's to love their family. It's to love animals when they sit down on the, on the grass or they see animals in a field. The child's nature is to be compassionate and to love. And this is why they are great teachers. You know, I've just recently become a father. And if I'm not feeling good in any moment, or I'm not smiling, my, my daughter knows. And she looks at me. And you can see in her eyes that she just doesn't want me to feel like that. And she'll do something to try and change the look on my face. And maybe it's just because I'm overthinking in that moment. Or maybe it's because I'm being hard on myself too. Because I too am a human being like everyone in the world. Like everyone doing this meditation right now. Like everyone in business. We're all just doing our best. Navigating our way through our own hero's journey. Through our careers. Through our relationships. Everyone is doing their best. And if it wasn't their best, they wouldn't be doing it. No one wants to be abusive. But hurt people hurt other people. No one wants to be depressed or suicidal. But trauma is deadly. There's many different kinds of or types of trauma, but I've experienced severe physical trauma from when I was hit by a car. And my life has changed as a result of that. I've had to fight harder to be the person that I was before the collision. I've had to fight harder to get the same quality of sleep that I got before the collision. I've had to fight harder to, recovery from, to recover from my exercise and my workouts compared to before the accident and many other things. But as soon as I go into a state of mind of, oh, this happened to me, what am I doing? I'm one-downing myself and one-upping everyone else that didn't have the collision. So I don't compare myself to other people in my failures or my challenges and adversities. And if you want to free yourself from judgment, Stop comparing yourself to others, your past, your future, where you think you should be by this time. And just show yourself some grace. Show yourself some compassion.
And maybe just repeat it off the me. I know that you're doing your best. I acknowledge you. I see you. I salute you. I celebrate you. I know that you're doing your best. Whatever is right now, let it be. Don't make it worse than it is. Make it better than it is by just reminding yourself, reminding yourself that you know you're doing your best. I know I'm doing my best. You're doing your best in your business. You're doing your best in your relationship. You're doing your best with your children or trying to have children or dealing with not having children. And is it okay to accept our reality as it is and saying that oh, this is the best that we can do. No, it's not okay. Because you can always learn, you can always grow, you can always become, you can always reinvent yourself, you can always strengthen your mind, your body, your spirit. You can always become more resilient. You can always become more patient, more persistent. But first you've got to do that from a place of fullness from a place of gratitude, from a place of grace and ease. By acknowledging that up until this point, you have just been doing your best. Give yourself a hug, a pat on the back, shake your hand, whatever works for you. And maybe just visualize you standing in front of you facing yourself and just putting a little smile on your face and say, it's okay. You've been doing your best. You're just doing your best. I see you. I salute you. I celebrate you. And now... For the only time in this meditation, I want you to go back over the timeline of your life from this present moment all the way back to as far as you can remember. And just like watching a movie without judgment, just observing, just witnessing. Just bring up those visuals or those memories of times where you've judged yourself. And it could be as early as 10 minutes before this meditation. It could be as far back as your very first memory of you judging yourself. And change the picture. Change the the story that you see in that picture from one of judgment to one of acknowledgement. Ah, I see. You were just doing your best. Ah, I remember that. You were just doing your best. Oh, you could have said that thing better to that person. You know, rather than carrying that around with you for the last five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that memory of what you said to someone and now you feel so bad for it, just acknowledge it. Change the story. I was just doing my best. As we all are. There is no person in the world 
in almost 8 billion people that is not doing their best with the circumstances that they have, with the upbringing that they've had, with the trauma that they're carrying, with the people around them, with their inner resources, with their current mindset, with their physical health, with their limitations on their life, whether it's geographic or financial, inner limitations, limiting beliefs, everyone is doing their best, including you, and you've always been doing your best. So just go back over the timeline of your life and look at every time you've judged yourself or been hard on yourself. And of course, you can come back and revisit this anytime you want and go deeper and further. And now bring yourself back to the last few days. The last few days or weeks or maybe even months. And remembering that we give ourselves more of a hard time than, than most people do. Of course, there's exceptions to this rule. But look at where you've given yourself grief where you've bullied yourself, where you've been hard to yourself, where you've rarely been unkind to yourself through maybe your words or your actions or your lack of action or your judgments or your procrastinations or you've maybe acted out in a way that you knew was unkind to yourself or you've indulged in something where you knew it was unkind to yourself. And just show yourself some compassion. You're just doing your best. And just breathe that in. With acknowledgement, own it with gratitude, be thankful for your awareness that you can look back on it and recognize and remind yourself over again that you're just doing your best. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just doing your best. You don't lack anything in terms of your ability to learn to be better. Anyone can learn to be better. Anyone can commit to being better. But at that moment in time, in that decision that you made or didn't make, you were just doing your best. Just connecting to yourself, either through really feeling the energy in your body, focusing on your heart, putting your hand or your hands on your heart, or visualizing yourself in front of you, maybe looking into a mirror. Repeat after me. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Connect with your body, your heart, your breath, or look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Letting go of your judgments of yourself. And owning that you've just been doing your best. 
show yourself some compassion. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Breathing in and breathing out. Putting your hands on your chest or your heart. With the energy in your hands, show yourself some love and kindness. With the warmth of your hands, show yourself some love and kindness. Connecting with your body, your heart, through your breath. Continue to breathe in and breathe out. Now I want you to visualize one person that you feel you need to forgive or that needs some love and kindness. And just extend one of your hands in front of you. And as you keep one hand connected to your heart, just send them love and kindness. Send them forgiveness. Send them compassion. Not empathy. Empathy is inside compassion. But em empathy is just recognizing suffering in others. Compassion is wanting to end that suffering or wanting to contribute to ending that suffering or wanting to contribute or not wanting to contribute towards the suffering. So just send some compassion with that love and kindness and forgiveness if there's forgiveness needed. And then extend both of your arms and just send love and kindness out to the whole world because we know so many people in the world need it right now. Every day people are taking their own lives, killing themselves because they judge themselves so much. Because they've got so much trauma, they've got so much baggage that they've been carrying around for years and they don't know how to deal with it. Life has become too painful. And everything in the world is energy. There's a reason why sometimes you'll be thinking of someone and then they'll call you and you'll think, how did that happen? I haven't spoken to that, put to that person in a year. It's because energy is transferred. So even if you don't believe it, even if it's a placebo effect, or even if it's not real, there's no benefit to not believing that you can send energy to someone. So let's just, with our final few breaths for this meditation, let's breathe in. And as we exhale, just, just send out love and kindness to wherever you can. And wherever you choose. Now returning your hands back to rest. Bringing yourself back to your body in your own time, wiggling your fingers and your toes. Start to move your wrists, move your elbows. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. 
be kinder to yourself, be more compassionate towards yourself, be more compassionate in your leadership, because the world needs it now more than ever. If we want to change the world, we have to change ourselves. And until we change ourselves, nothing changes.